First they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. This is the saga of what's going on in crypto right now. All the crazy things that are happening. And I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant about crypto custody since that's sort of my specialty and kind of why I thought crypto existed in the first place. So this is about the Fit 21 bill that's going on in Congress in the U.S. right now. And it's kind of crazy because I don't want to get political. I'm not trying to take sides here. I'm just trying to state the facts of what what's going on and what the implications are. So basically, to make a very long story short and to sort of simplify this, you have members of the House and members of the Senate that have been at odds and battling over regulations over banks and crypto custody. And the Senate wants to have separate regulations and the House wants to have the same regulations as banks because they want banks to participate in the crypto industry, in the crypto world. And the Senate, which is primarily run by Democrats, don't want that to happen. They want to have a separate strict rules for crypto because I'm sure their donors and their cronies and everyone else sees this as a threat. Well, now they're in a predicament because it's an election year and you have a lot of voters on every side of the aisle, independent, Democrat, Republican, you name it, that crypto is one of their top voting issues. This was a long time coming, but for we'll call it for the last two to four years, pro-crypto has been more so on the Republican side. And you have like Senator Warren who has her anti-crypto army and Democrats have been pretty much anti-crypto. Basically what's happened here is they've both aligned because the voters are saying, we're gonna vote in our best, best interest. And if I'm a Democrat, for example, which I'm not, but let's say I'm a Democrat and I care about crypto, I'm not gonna vote for who's in office right now because I want my crypto protected. I want my rights protected. I want my self custody protected. I don't want the government blocking me and my ability to use crypto for any reason doesn't matter, okay? So now they're finally getting smart and everyone's trying to align. Except for today, a couple hours ago, House passed a bill, the Senate passed a bill, and it went to President Biden's desk and he vetoed it. Now, this seems pretty stupid to me because President Biden doesn't seem to be doing so well right now. It's almost like he's trying to burn himself. It's like he's putting the final nail in his re-election coffin because you have both the House and the Senate who want to pass this bill because they know it's going to keep them in office. And just so we're clear, the government is only there to help themselves. It should be to serve us as citizens, but no, they're going to serve their best interest, which is staying in power and staying in office. So both of them tried to do that and President Biden blocked it for some arbitrary reason. I'm sure there's donors or someone paying to keep this out so that the banks aren't in control of crypto custody, which if you're an institution and you have regulations and you have compliance and you have all this crap, then I understand that there's some subset of the markets that are going to want crypto custody because they have to. For people like you and me, self-custody is the only way to own your own private keys and to own your own crypto. If I leave my keys with crypto custody, that's no different than a bank. So why would I even want to do that? Now that's beside the point. There's a commercial business, there's a custody business for large corporations that hold reserves. You know, Coinbase is doing this. A lot of different US exchanges are going to be doing this. But the main point I'm trying to get across here is everyone's trying to find a way to do compliance so that trillions of dollars can flow in. Even though I'm diametrically opposed to the entire concept there, basically this has to happen one way or another for crypto to get further in adoptions. Now we did get the ETFs. We did get some sort of mainstream acceptance with crypto in general, starting with Bitcoin. And now with the Ether ETF we talked about, but custody is the big problem here because most people don't trust themselves to custody their own crypto or want to learn. You know, on my channel, Crypto Renegade, I'm trying to give the power back to you, teach you how to manage your own money, your own private keys and become your own bank so that you don't have to rely on institutions or bureaucrats or the government or people that want to take the power away from you and keep it for themselves and they can tell you what you can and can't do with your own money aka your private keys of your crypto now in this particular case what i want to get at is that this isn't a political move when it comes to custody and you have both sides of the aisle that are really just trying to focus on getting a bill passed to keep themselves in power and then you go to the president and he vetoes it 
you're gonna not only piss off your your constituents but like what are you doing trump came out as pro crypto and you know if you're looking at trying to win a political race you would think that hey it's made very clear that everyone in america vast majority wants crypto whether you're democrat republican independent libertarian it doesn't matter you want crypto so biden is just either stupid or there's something nefarious going on because why would he veto this bill to make crypto custody and crypto compliance and allow us to have a competitive edge in the United States of America? Because all these people that want to build custody services or compliance services or mining services or have the ability to transact using crypto and grow this entire sector, if they don't get compliance and if they don't get what they want from the U.S. government, they're going to take all their money and go overseas to someone that will help them. And those countries would be smart to let them in because this is the wave of the future. What you have is a bunch of bureaucrats and politicians that don't understand what they're doing. They're all, I don't know, 70, 80 years old. They don't understand this technology at all. You try to explain it to them. They don't have any clue what's going on. None of them can regulate something that they don't understand. So they're gonna take their time and they're gonna be slow because what's the rush? Except now they are feeling the pressure and they are feeling the rush because everybody's made clear that I'm gonna vote in the best interests of my crypto. And if you're an old politician that doesn't get with the program, you're out. And so these entrenched bureaucrats basically just are only trying to react, knee jerk react to what the voters demands are when it's convenient for them, which is now. Problem is, you know, you finally get two sides to align on one issue and then you have the president veto it. We're gonna find out that this is gonna bite him in the ass really hard. To what extent, I don't really know, but it seems really foolish that you have a bill past both parties and then the president vetoes it. Like, what are you doing? This is obviously what people want. At very least, it's what the politicians want to keep themselves in power, which is an indication that, hey, you basically, this is what everyone needs. In order for me to stay in office as a, as a congressman, this needs to happen. So, okay, I guess Biden doesn't care. He has other things that he wants to pursue, but he doesn't even know what planet he's on. He's so friggin' old, it doesn't matter, but I digress. This bill is a step of broader acceptance into the market. It brings more legitimacy to mining, to custody, to the entire sector and all of its different sub-industries. We finally got to a point where senators and the government in general are starting to accept that this is a reality that they can't escape. This is something that is completely unavoidable and they know this. They're trying to slow it down. They're trying to take their time, but the voters aren't gonna wait for that. If you're too old to understand, we're gonna vote someone in who does and who cares and who at least will pretend to help us out and serve our best interests. Whether or not that's fake or that's true doesn't really matter. But the point is at this particular point, it just doesn't make sense to me. There has to be something else going on here. I know switching topics over real quick from this bill and how it relates to CBDCs and again, if you're unfamiliar with what a CBDC is, that stands for Central Bank Digital Currency. This is what they do in China right now. This has been rolled out in several uh, Asian territories, including China. But basically what it is, is a digital currency where they airdrop coins or what they call digital yuan in China. They airdrop it into a wallet that's controlled and censored. And for example, if the US were to roll this out, any social security, food stamps, government welfare, handout, anything like that, they would just airdrop it for you into your wallet. And then hypothetically, because this is what's going on in China, which has proven the point that, hey, if you uh, bought a loaf of bread on Monday, we're gonna make sure that you can't spend because it's programmable money. The government gets to decide when you get to buy bread or if your social credit score isn't high enough, then you can't go out and buy alcohol or beer or cigarettes or Maybe you filled up your gas tank one week, but maybe we don't want you to go anymore. So you're not able to spend money on gas for another week or two, whatever the case is. The point is they're in control. They can freeze your wallet. They can pause your wallet. They can restrict what you buy, how you buy it, when you buy it, how much you buy, and basically stranglehold. One of the best quotes I've heard in crypto, it's actually in my IG profile, but whoever controls the people's means of exchange controls the people. So that's the entire reason I got into Bitcoin in the first place. And obviously I got into broader crypto and different blockchains and different use cases that are completely valid and completely useful. But Bitcoin is FU money. If someone tries to seize it like a bank or a government, FU, you can't. If someone wants to pause what I can and can't buy, 
Sorry, F you, you can't. So this whole idea, going back real quick to the government and CBDCs and these regulations are, these are just slow moving steps to broader adoption, broader acceptance. President Trump already came out and said, I'll absolutely not do a CBDC if you vote for him. That's pretty compelling because you don't hear Biden saying he's not gonna do that, let alone you don't see him saying, I'm gonna start accepting crypto. If he really wants to get reelected, he's going to have to start accepting it. Otherwise, I don't know what he's doing because the people have spoken and it's long, long overdue. I, I think at first, as I, as, same as my intro, like they tried to stop it. They realized that it's unstoppable. These old people who don't care to learn new technology don't realize its fundamental nature of its decentralization and that literally you cannot stop it. It's an unstoppable force. They're finally starting to get the hint. They're trying to fight us and they're trying to win. We're not gonna let them win. I still believe fully in self-custody, controlling your own private keys. I have tons of tutorials. I have a free ebook. I have a bunch of free resources for people that wanna learn to take the power into their own hands so that you control the Bitcoin, so that you don't leave it on an exchange. You don't leave it on a hot wallet. You don't leave it on you know some sort of custody service. Like for example, if you have it on Coinbase or Robinhood or any sort of third party, PayPal, doesn't matter, that's not your crypto. You don't control the private keys. That's the same as a bank. And that's what we were trying to get away from this entire time by moving over to this new monetary policy that can't be screwed with. It can't be changed. It's not subject to the bureaucratic whims. It's not subject to governments. It's not subject to control of any one person. Everyone votes for it as it's a democratic process. And that's really why I got into Bitcoin in the first place. It was the first money that could not be corrupted or manipulated by one single force. Every other central bank in the world from the beginning of time has failed. Right now, we're, we're at a very pivotal point where people wanna control the, well, when I say people, I mean the government wants to control the money supply. And quite honestly, they're starting to realize that their power is slipping away. And the sooner that they embrace this and try to even regulate it to their benefit, the better it will be for them. The problem is, is they're trying to pin something down and regulate something that they can't control. So it's all gonna be a fear-based narrative. Maybe they'll outlaw it, maybe they'll make it illegal if they can't control it, but they sure as hell are gonna try. That's my rant right now, going back full circle to the bill. I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know if they're gonna try to push it again, but being that this is an election issue, for everyone, left, right, center, independent, libertarian, it doesn't matter. Crypto's here to stay, it's an unstoppable force. They better get on board, otherwise they're gonna get voted out, which at this point, everyone, the, the, the whole Congress basically should all just be voted out and reapply. There should be an age limit. Basically what I'm trying to say is we need to have people in power where their incentives to serve us instead of us serving them and their interests we need to figure out a way to align that, and I have a few ideas. Sure, I might be dreaming that might not be realistic, but I'll tell you what, we've gotten this far, so it's possible. And at some point, all these 70, 80, 90 year old bureaucrats are gonna kick the bucket and be replaced with someone that is younger and understands this technology, they understand the industry, and hopefully we get someone that just loves freedom and loves choice and can really steer this in the direction that this movement that started in 2008 was really all about. So if you liked the video, please like, please subscribe. You know, I'll go ahead and go into depth on different topics, depending on if you leave a comment for me, I'll dig into it and let the majority win. But just wanted to get on and kind of give my thoughts on this bill, how government is handling crypto, sort of the journey that we've been on. And quite honestly, it's really, really interesting to see how this has played out and how interested and I'm going to be to watch this play out over the next several months all the way into November because I think politicians that have been ignoring this or rejecting this and have been fighting this have now finally realized, holy crap, if I don't get on board, I'm out of power. That's not the right reason to do it, but that's their motive and that's their incentive. So either way, that benefits you and me, people like you and me that care about crypto, Look, you don't need to regulate to protect people. If people want to gamble on crypto, if they want to buy a meme coin and they get rug pulled, that's their choice. Know the risk before you place. The same as flying in a hot air balloon. They make you sign a waiver. We don't know what could happen. It could go down. You could die. 
but you're choosing to engage in that activity. That's your choice as an American citizen, an adult citizen. Same with any dangerous activity or sport. Yes, bad things could happen. Doesn't mean they will. It doesn't mean you have to get permission from the government. It just means that this a risk, there's a reward. Let me make the choice. It's none of your business what I do with my time and my money and my risk. The flip side of that though is people who engage in this activity have to start taking responsibility for those actions. So if hypothetically uh, I buy into a meme coin and let's say I put 10, 10 grand into it, I'm taking the risk that that could either go to zero or it could theoretically go to a million. But I don't wanna go cry wolf to a regulator if someone rug pulls me. That's the risk that I accepted as a human being. That's the risk, that's what gambling is. How is this any different than a casino? But I digress. The point is, take personal responsibility for your choices, good or bad, and when you start doing that, you take the power back away from those in power and stop feeling powerless, and you can actually start feeling powerful yourself, knowing that you control your own fate and your own destiny by your own choices and your own actions, and you can learn from them. Basically, your own experience and your own failures are the best teacher. You don't need a government agency to tell you that that's the case, or what's gonna keep you safe, or what you should do. You, you know, you have a mom and dad that are supposed to guide you through that, but the point is, is the, that's not the government's job. It's not their job to keep you safe. It's your job to keep you safe by investing time, learning, talking to people that you trust, but I'll go ahead and wrap this up here. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna have a lot more of these types of walking around videos. I'm just out walking my dog in my new uh, town that I live in and it's really beautiful. I'm really enjoying it. So I'm gonna go in and do some more positive things that I see happening, but I really just wanted to go on a rant on this. And I know it's a little bit all over the place. Comment and let me know what topics you guys want. Comment and let me know what you like and what you didn't like. I wanna tailor this so it benefits you, gives you guys something to think about and something that you enjoy. So I will go ahead and wrap this up here. Go ahead and click on this video on the screen to watch my first intro video on this channel. And there's lots more to come. Crypto Renegade out.